This is a presentation that was given at the EAGE conference 2016 in Vienna. It is an introduction to a Talwake tracker and that is a new voxel based auto tracker to map channels and associated margins. We will start by introducing uh, the Talwake tracker, where it comes from, how it was uh, developed and where it fits in the scheme of uh, auto trackers. We then discuss the methodology, the concept, how you can control the tracker and then we will give a number of examples from different um, studies carried out in different types of settings. Let's start with a definition. In geography and fluvial geomorphology, Talwake is defined as the line of lowest elevation within a valley of watercourse. Talwake is a German term. Tal means valley and weg is path, so literal literal uh, translation would be a valley path. You could also say that the Talwake is uh, uh, trying to find the uh, path of lowest uh, resistance when the water flows uh, through the valley. And that is the analog we use when we describe uh, a Talwake tracker as a seismic amplitude tracker that follows in three dimensions the path of least resistance. The concept and prototype uh, software were developed by Mike Pelletier in 2014 when he was working on the Zhaodong oil field in China, where he needed a tool to map channelized features to guide the development drilling program. In 2015, Dagang Zhaodong Oil Company sponsored DGB to develop a plugin to OpenDetect, and this plugin was released in 2016 as part of the OpenDetect Pro uh, software, which is the commercial version of OpenDetect. Now let's see where this new tracker uh, fits in. We'll uh, start by looking at conventional auto trackers. These have been around for uh, many years, developed uh, since the 1980s. Basically these track uh, amplitudes, phase or correlations, and the uh, output is a uh, horizon, typically snapped to a certain event. This, these type of trackers uh, have problems with lateral uh, phases changes and may have uh, loop skips, especially if the constraints are set not properly. So here we uh, we see uh, an example. The real key thing to remember in the context of this comparison is that it delivers a two-dimensional surface that is snapped to an event. The next uh, tracker is new, so I'll explain it in a few uh, slides. It's an unconformity tracker. And now we're not tracking amplitude or phase, but we're tracking dip. Dip that was calculated from the seismic response. This uh, type of tracker can be used to track any uh, geologic uh, timeline. can be tracked uh, or used to track seismic reflectors, but also to track unconformities. The result is an unsnapped horizon, and that's the main difference between the previous one. So let's have a look at how this uh, tracker uh, actually works in the uh, development or in the implementation in OpenDetect. Um, if we start with this uh, red service, then we will co compute at every uh, grid position the dip along that surface. We compare that dip with the dip as measured in the seismic, and based on the error, we're going to warp the uh, horizon in such a way that the error is minimized. So this is based on an inversion scheme, where the main aim is to minimize the error between the surface grid and the seismic dip. After 10, 20 uh, iteration, you, you will have uh, reached the, uh, the best solution for this uh, space, and you have found your, uh, your, uh, your horizon. Now in this case, this is purely unconstrained. It's only trying to minimize the error, but you can also force the solution to go through your own interpretation. So these points, you can manually pick, or you can take them from uh, well markers. And then what the software will do, it will just follow the uh, dip in between the markers and it will honor the markers uh, exactly as you have picked them. And that can be done on any uh, event that you want to correlate. So the main difference between a normal auto tracker is that this relates in unsnapped seismic horizons. Uh, but basically the uh, 
large advantage is that you can track anything unconformity, seismic events, basically any thing that can be correlated in the seismic. The next tracker is a conventional voxel based tracker and these trackers they uh, track on absolute uh, amplitude and they result in 3D bodies, point clouds by connecting voxels and their faces. Here we see an example, in this case uh, the purple uh, image or fault image is calculated with uh, thin fault likelihood, thin fault likelihood, that is the, uh, the new fault imaging uh, attribute that was developed by Dave Hale of the Colorado School of Mines. We then use this as input to calculate fracture density. And these fracture density were then uh, combined into bodies using a voxel connectivity filter. So basically uh, the blobs that you see here are point clouds, clouds ranked for size, giving you the sweet spots where you find most fractures, most of these faults uh, that were computed through this thin fault likelihood fracture density uh, attribute combination. Then we come to the Talway tracker. Also this one is a voxel based uh, tracker, but the main difference between the previous one is that it is uh, tracking relative amplitude. And it can be used for tracking channels and associated margins, which is the uh, main uh, examples we will give in this paper. But we believe that this tracker also has more general applicabilities and you can also use it for other seismic phases. The output is either a 3D body, a point cloud, or you can snap it to a horizon. And here you see two examples. On the left, a uh, channel, and the end result is a point cloud or 3D body. And in the right one, we have snapped the, uh, the point cloud to the uh, to the horizon. Now let's have a look on uh, what the methodology uh, actually uh, is and how you can uh, control this uh, this tracker. As I said, it's a voxel-based uh, connectivity filter, so we start with uh, one single seat position and then we evaluate all the neighbors at uh, around this particular seat position and we only accept the best fitting neighbor. So if we are looking for a maximum amplitude, then we will only accept the most positive amplitude that we can find in all the neighbors surrounding the seat position. That one will be uh, added to the growing body. So now we have two points. Again, we will look uh, all around the bodies for the neighbors and we, uh, uh, we grow the body by accepting again the best fitting most positive amplitude or most negative amplitude depending on what we are tracking. Now the idea is that you do this uh, to find the tile wake. So you, can, you run it uh, thousands of times and at some point this uh, tracker will go into the next tile wake or into the next body. You find the point where this uh, happens and you rerun the algorithm to stay within the tile wake. So you just dial back to the position and rerun it. So then you have found the tile wake and the next step you add another layer of uh, points to the growing body but now you uh, relax the constraints a little bit so that the body grows in a controlled way. Let's look at Let's look at how you can uh, grow these bodies. If you do it uh, in the conventional way, that is the isotropic way, then you just accept all the neighborings that fit your uh, your constraints. So if you're looking for a positive amplitude or an amplitude above a certain uh, threshold value, you just accept all the ones that along that growing body that fulfill that constraint. This is perfect for uh, mapping sheet sands or flooding surfaces. If you use it in the tile wake mode, then basically this is an anisotropic type of growing. You only accept the best uh, cell from all the, uh, the neighbors and that is the one in which the, uh, the body will grow. And this will give you the tile wake or the skeleton of a seismic phages. And then you can also do a mixed type of mode 
where you can uh, find the margin. So after you've found the tile wake, you then grow the body by accepting, say, a certain percentage of all the uh, the neighbors that fulfill your uh, your constraints. You do this in uh, layers. So the first uh, layer, typically, you find the tile wake, and then you grow the body by adding a second layer to find the margins. Let's look at the uh, dial back uh, construction. On the uh, figure on the left, we see uh, a body that uh, has been grown from the center of the green blob. Uh, and it has uh, grown with uh, 5000 uh, voxels. You can see from the color scheme that it uh, has grown from the green blob first to the left. And then at some point it uh, spilled over into the next blob, which is the yellow patch on the right. From there it spilled into the next blob, uh, which is reddish uh, and yellow and so on. So we can see where it actually filled over, spilled over from one tile wake or one body into the next. If we are interested only in the, uh, the first three blobs on the left, then we can find the point where this uh, spills over in the next uh, body and we just dial back and rerun from the same seat position, in this case 1800 uh, voxels, to generate the body uh, number two. So then we have found the tile wake of this particular uh, body and now we're adding another layer, we're growing the uh, body with another 5000 voxels to find the margins of this uh, body. And this is exactly the way it is done in the Zhao Dong uh, oil field where this example comes from to create maps that can be used for, uh, for guiding the drilling program. Now the number of voxels is an important control. You, uh, you first uh, try to find the, uh, uh, the tile wake. So you run it with a, a number of uh, points. On the left you see the, uh, the body uh, with a small number of voxels. Uh, if I increase the number of voxels, let it run for a larger number, then basically it spills over and it finds the adjacent overbanks uh, features uh, for me. And if I uh, do it in between, then I find the channel and its nearby bank margins. You can uh, combine different bodies by uh, mapping uh, different patches from different seats. If we look on the left, we have started uh, our tracker with uh, a seat in the green blob and then it uh, spilled over to generate uh, the body uh, with 3500 uh, voxels as we see it on the left. If we would have started from the uh, middle of the uh, central body then uh, we would have generated almost the same body uh, where we have the overlap but we now would have spilled into the right to, uh, to have the exact same number of uh, voxels. So we can uh, merge these two uh, horizons uh, to create the uh, the body on the on the right hand side. When we do this, we also calculate uh, a number of seismic attributes. Uh, obviously, we uh, we map uh, two-way time or depth, uh, but also the tracking order is an important uh, attribute that is saved with the uh, <coughs> with the body or the horizon that comes out. The uh, the cell number, the thickness, the amplitude sum, and the amplitude itself are all uh, attributes that you get as part of this, uh, this tracking uh, result. Now let's have a look at some real life examples and uh, these come from different parts of, uh, of the world. We will look at uh, the Saudong oil field uh, first. This is where the uh, tracker actually uh, was, uh, was developed for the first time. Um, then we have an example from Ireland, the Porcupine Basin. Uh, an example from the F3 block and an example from Penobscot offshore Canada. The Zhaodong uh, oil field in Bohai Bay, China is a highly compartmentalized uh, uh, oil field with numerous reservoirs levels in Cenozoic and Mesozoic. Uh, they're all fluvial deposits with a wide range of fluvial environments. And well planning for this particular field is based on 
uh, seismic amplitudes and they're going for horizontal producers and high angle injectors. On the left we see a seismic image where we see uh, the quality of the seismic is not that good. Um, pretty noisy data but we see some higher amplitudes uh, along a fault system and these are uh, stacked uh, channels. In the middle we uh, have a bit of cleaned up the seismic and we have run the tailway tracker on the number of these channels, uh, tailway plus margins. And these are the type of uh, objects that we actually need to present to the, uh, to the drillers because that is what they are trying to follow when they uh, produce this field. On the right hand we see uh, a special case where we uh, constrain the uh, growing bodies to fall only within a fault uh, compartment. And we do this by blending the thin fault likelihood attribute with the seismic so that the body cannot grow over the thin fault likelihood uh, fault image. If we look at the uh, different attributes uh, for particular bodies, then on the left we see uh, the absolute amplitude of this uh, body, and that is a good indicator for lithology and uh, fluid. And on the right hand, <coughs> we see the, uh, uh, the, the tracking order, which is uh, giving us a new view of the organization of relative amplitudes, which we believe to have uh, interpretational value. We're still not quite sure how to interpret this, but you can see the different blobs, bodies in this uh, particular channel uh, complex. And uh, we think it has uh, some kind of uh, meaning, but that is something that we still want to, uh, to work on further on. What does this tracking order give us in additional seismic interpretation information? The next example is from the uh, Porcupine Basin. It's an incised uh, valley and canyons. We see the porcupine high, uh, the porcupine ridge uh, on the left, and the basin is um, towards the right. We have mapped the uh, the tail wake uh, of the upper canyon uh, generalized uh, <coughs> feature, and if we slice through this uh, uh, this part with A B, then you can see the seismic response uh, reflected there in the upper image. Next one is from F3 in the Netherlands. Um, we're here using the tile wake to track uh, sediment uh, waves. Uh, these uh, sediment waves have uh, proven shallow gas trapped in these uh, sediments and uh, it's a currently an exploration target in the Netherlands. So starting with one seed only we generate uh, the amplitude map on the right and we immediately get the skeleton of the sediment uh, waves uh, mapped from this one uh, seat position. On the left uh, we see an image with uh, the amplitudes with a smaller number of uh, cells or voxels tracked and on the right we see the tracker with more uh, number of cells. And you can see the same pattern uh, emerges. The uh, Channel waves become a little bit broader and there are more waves uh, mapped if you map more cells. And that is also reflected in the uh, tracking order display. On the left, uh, the display was generated with uh, 100,000 voxels that were tracked and on the right with 200,000 uh, voxels tracked. The uh, message is that we get the same skeleton uh, uh, from this, uh, this tracking. And the last example is uh, from Penobscot, uh, offshore Canada. It is, is a combination of siliciclastic and carbonate phages. The RGB blending uh, of uh, spectral components on the left, we, uh, we see the carbonate platform phages, we see the carbonate slope basinal phages, and from the right hand side we see a plastic channel lobe coming in. Along the line A to A prime, we see a number of uh, reefs uh, developing and this line is also going through the, uh, the channel lobe and the seismic response is reflected on the, is shown on the right. If we use our tailway tracker on the channel as well as on the uh, reef trend, then this is what we get. And uh, 
that gives us also confidence that this channel or this particular tracker can also be used for other seismic phases than just the tile wake and its margins. If we compare the shape of the uh, object, the body that we get from the tile wake tracker with the shape that we get from a conventional auto tracker using the same number of uh, voxels that you track, then you can see the, uh, the shape is quite different. On the right with the tile wake tracker I can immediately recognize this as a kind of body and it also is what I have observed in my RGB blending uh, uh, image. And on the right it, it just uh, is not interpretable in terms of a, of a channel lobe. So we think that also here the tile wake tracker has uh, uh, an edge, an advantage that it gives us really something that has interpretation value. Now let's uh, wrap up. I have tried to uh, introduce to you a tileway tracker which has already uh, proven its value in guiding the drilling program in the Zhaodong oil field by providing maps of channels and their margins faster and more accurately than alternative methods. The tracker exploits the inherent amplitude organization of sedimentary bodies and we think the tool has potential to be used as general purpose seismic interpretation tracker, so not just for tile wakes and their margins, but for other seismic phases as well. We realize that more research is required to establish which depositional phases can be mapped, and also to get a better understanding of the organization of the relative amplitudes that is revealed in the tracking order attributes. We would like to thank Dagang Zhaodong Oil Company for sponsoring the development of the tile wake tracker, and we'd like to thank the data owners for permission to show these results. Thank you very much.